Hello everyone, welcome to Split Second. My name is Cicada and I'll be taking you through today's match. Before starting, we at Split Second want to thank everyone for your constant support and suggestions on all social media. You can continue to support us by sharing and liking this video, subscribing if you haven't yet, or by becoming a patron. We'd also like to remind you guys to try and support your local game store by buying MTG products there. Help keep your store alive. Finally, while the current global situation continues, we will be providing everyone with high-quality digital gameplay rather than paper magic. Now it's time to get into the fun. This week I'm piloting Okagashi Maze's End by our founder. Luis is piloting Firebrand Curiosity inspired by Cobblepot. David is playing his Kinan and Bal is on Winota Stacks. It's time to look at our starting hands. Cockatrice seems obsessed with letting Luis start. He kept a nice hand though after two mulligans. He has Tropical Island and Mana Confluence as lands. Vampiric Tutor allows him to search his library as needed. Seedborn Muse can be used to abuse Thrasios, while Firebrand Archer gives him card advantage with Curiosity effects. Nature's Claim can interact with us, and he mulligan mocks Opal to the bottom of his library. This is a well-rounded hand. David kept a single Snow Island but has some early ramp. Sol Ring, Chrome Mox, Birds of Paradise, and a Simic Signet. This means you could have a really sick turn 1. Free from the Reel on Birds of Paradise allows Kinnan to get him infinite mana and win with his commander. Looking at his hand, this could mean a turn 2 win. Narset is just overall great for a card selection and hate. Bal mulligan once and kept 2 lands, Plateau and a Flooded Strand. He has no ramp. However, Grenzo is pretty good card advantage on a stick, and both Avon Mind Sensor and Linvala Keeper of Silence are extremely relevant hate pieces to stop people from searching libraries and Kinnan and Thrasius from providing value. Legion Warboss is bonkers with Winota and Grenzo. Lena works well as protection. I had to mulligan once and chose to keep my second hand. I don't have a lot going for me, but I chose to keep it because the deck isn't super fast and I had Null Rod, which is not only great overall, but it takes win cons and combo pieces from Keenan. Definitely the fastest deck on the board. Arcane Signet numbers with Null Rod, but I'm looking at Vampiric Tutor as a way to either sneak in and ad nauseum or just an earlier card advantage engine. My lands are Command Tower, Badlands, Tundra and Underground Sea. Let's get this show going! Despite me protesting, Luis keeps winning the role and starting our matches. He starts pretty conservatively, however, with a single tropical island before passing. David copies Luis and plays a tropical island. He goes a lot deeper though. He casts Sol Ring, which ramps him into a Simic Signet. Finally, he exiles Narset Parter of Veils to play a Chrome Mox and a Birds of Paradise. Six cards in a single turn and an absurd amount of mana available to him on turn 2. He passes, making us all feel pretty overwhelmed. Bal plays a plateau and then follows it up with a mother of runes he just drew. No ramp for him. I follow the tradition of letting David ramp for all of us by playing a single command tower and passing. On his second turn, Luis plays a mana confluence and passes fully open. He is probably as afraid of David as we are, and rightfully so. David plays a snow-covered island and then casts his commander, increasing the mana produced by each of his ramp pieces by one. Tapping Sol Ring and Simic Signet, he casts free from the reel, targeting Birds of Paradise. He leaves an extra green mana floating. If this spell resolves, David will have infinite mana and win on the spot. Turn 2. Bal passes priority. I also pass priority. Thankfully, we all breathe with gratitude as Luis, in response, casts a Cyclonic Rift targeting the birds. David responds to that with a brainstorm, trying to find a counter spell. He doesn't, however, so the rift resolves. The birds go back to David's hand, and the fruit from the reel goes into the graveyard. Using the green mana still in his pool, David recasts Birds of Paradise and then casts Mystic Remora. I respond and cast Vampiric Tutor, losing 2 life and getting an Okame adversary to try and draw some cards, since David refuses to let up and I know I'm going to get extra behind after my next turn. David passes with no cards in hand. Bal plays a Flutter Strand, cracks it and fetches for a Sacred Foundry, which he puts into play untapped. He then casts Grenzo Havoc Razor, fully ready to get himself ahead if we manage to prevent David from winning. He then passes his turn, keeping the Mother of Runes untapped to protect Grenzo and herself from removal. On my turn, I play an Underground Sea and then put on my Sacrificial Face as I cast a Null Rod without paying for David's Remora. 
Now, David can't use his Kinnon to search for something like an internal witness or another value outlet. I then pass the turn, so behind it hurts. Luis plays a Bayou and then casts his commander, Thrasios, to try and generate some card advantage while not feeding the fish. He passes. On his turn, David pays for his Remora, painfully short on mana to keep the fish up for much longer. Hopefully it will net him a few more cards. He passes. On Ball's turn, he plays a Plains and then casts a Legion Warboss, making that Grenzo extra scary. At the beginning of combat, the Warboss triggers and creates a 1-1 token and Ball attacks me with it and Grenzo. And I was just sitting in my corner completely harmless. But it does know I have an ad nauseum and the other two players have blockers. I take three, grants on triggers, and I reveal a Bloom Tender and a Graft Digger's Cage. Bal does not have mana to cast either of these cards. So, he passes to me. Now that it's my turn, I play a Badlands and then cast an Okim Adversary and a Deathrite Shaman to try and finally get some magic going. I pass the turn. Getting to his turn, Luis plays a Misty Rainforest and moves to his end step, content about sitting back and drawing cards from Thrasios. On his end step, David casts a Mystical Tutor, searching for a Noxious Revival to try and win again once he's set up. On his turn, David pays for his Remora once again, not too pleased with the fishing so far. He then taps Birds of Paradise for 2 mana to cast a Winter Orb and reduce Luis's ability to abuse Thrasios. The orb resolves and David passes. On Bal's turn, he untaps his plateau and then plays the planes. With this board state, he's not too upset about the board. He might have even played one himself if he had it at hand. Bal goes to combat, creating a goblin token from the war boss. On attack, he leaves one of the tokens behind and he mentors the recently created one. He attacks Luis with Grenzo and the war boss and David with a 2 2 token. Luis blocks Grenzo with Thrasios and loses 2 to the war boss. David chooses not to block and takes two from the goblin. Grenzo triggers and David exiles a Sculling Tarn from the top. Luis reveals a carpet of flowers, which Bal then casts on his second main phase, giving David the Remora trigger he needed. In response to that trigger, he casts Noxious Revival, targeting Freeze from the Reel. He puts it on top of his library and then draws it. Bal goes to his end step. On my turn, I untap my command tower. Then, I play a Tundra. Going to combat, I attack David with my Okim OK adversary since he's still ahead and I'm not. He doesn't block, taking two and letting me draw a card. I then exile Bal's Flutter Strand with my Deathrite Shaman and cast a Rhesic Study I just drew. This card will be extra good thanks to the Winter Orb. I don't pay for the Remora. In response to the trigger, Luis casts a Vampiric Tutor, losing two life. David draws a card again. His fish really paid off this turn cycle. With that, my turn ends. On Luis's turn, he plays the Command Tower and cracks Misty Rainforest to get an Underground Sea. He then plays a Seedborn Muse, which is pretty great. My study triggers and I draw a card. Luis then passes. David untaps his Tropical Island, plays a Gaius Cradle, and then tries to get that Freeze from the Reel to stick into his Birds of Paradise. He doesn't pay for my Rhesic Study, so I draw a card while not finding anything to interact with what's happening. Luis casts an Assassin's Trophy on the birds, saving us from certain doom a second time paying for my Rhystic Study. In response, David adds 2 blue mana to his mana pool. The birds die, and David gets a snow-covered forest. Using the 2 mana in his pool, he plays a Reclamation Sage. He doesn't pay for my Rhystic Study, and I draw a card. Reclamation Sage's ETB destroys my Null Rod, freeing David's mana. He then casts a Green Sun Zenith for 3, paying for my Rhystic Study. He gets an Eternal Witness, which triggers and returns his Freeze from the Reel back to his hand. He then passes. On Bal's turn, he untaps his Plateau. Using the two mana from the Carpet of Flowers, he casts his commander, Winota. In response, Luis activates Thrasios and reveals a Keen Sense, which is pretty good in his deck. Bal goes to his combat step and creates a Goblin. He mentors it and attacks me with Grenzo, Warboss and a 1-1 token. David is attacked with both 2-2 Goblin tokens. We know the triggers 5 times. He fizzles the first one, the second one gets him a Sanctum Prelate, for which he chooses the number 3, to prevent Toxic Deluges, Thrand Dynamo and Freed from the Reel. It enters attacking David with Indestructibility. The third trigger gets him a Tajik Legion's Edge, entering the battlefield attacking David once again and making him feel particularly targeted. On the fourth trigger, Bal puts in play a Village Bellringer, which is a combo piece with Kiki Jiki which he actually drew this turn. 
He responds to the untapped trigger using Mother of Runes to give one of the goblin tokens attacking David protection from green. The bell ringer enters, attacking me. On the fifth trigger, he gets a combat celebrant that enters attacking Luis, thankfully not having the exert trigger available. Luis doesn't block and takes 4. David doesn't block either and takes 9 and I take 6. Granzo then triggers. He goads my Deathrite Shaman and I exile a Taiga, a Torpor Orb and an Angel's Grace. He goads David's Kinnon and David exiles a War of Invention, a Thassa's Oracle and a Snow-Covered Forest, meaning he just lost a Wincon. Luis's Muse gets goaded. This was a huge turn and Balt went to his end step pretty happy about it. On my turn, I untap my command tower and play a tropical island. I add mana with my Deathrite Shaman, exiling Luis's Misty Rainforest, and cast the Arcane Signet I had from my starting hand. Using the Signet, I play a Mystic Remora, looking to net myself a whole more bunch of cards. Not too upset, I end my turn. On Luis's turn, he casts a Firebrand Archer. He doesn't pay for my study, so I draw another card. He then tries to enchant the Firebrand with a Keen Sense. I draw for the Remora, and with the study draw trigger on the stack, I cast a Mystical Tutor. I tutor for a mental misstep and then draw it with the Rhystic Study. I think a lot about Luis's play, uncertain just how far he can go with it, especially when I also benefit a lot from him playing a bunch of spells. Ultimately, I decide that me getting ahead is good, especially when none of them is completely prepared to stop me from winning and I let it resolve. However, Luis follows this up with a Sensei's Divining Top, triggering Firebrand Archer and my Rhystic Study and Remora, netting me two extra cards. Because the Divining Top is abusable with the Firebrand Archer, allowing Luis to dig deeper, and he might have artifact cost reduction in his library, I misstep it in response to the Firebrand Archer trigger. Luis's Firebrand deals 1 damage to each player and nets him 3 cards. Luis then plays a Flooded Strand and cracks it for a Volcanic Island. He casts Cabal Ritual. I draw 2 cards and Luis draws 3 cards from the Firebrand Pings. He pays 2 life to cast a Gitaxian Probe, targeting me. I once again draw 2 cards, feeling like I'm living my ad nauseum fantasy through Luis. The Archer triggers again and Luis draws 3 cards. He draws 1 from the Probe. He uses 2 of the black mana to cast Arcane Signet, triggering the Firebrand, Study and Remora again, and then casts an Entomb for those extra juicy triggers. Luis puts a Niv Mizzet Pyron into his graveyard. He goes to his attack step, attacking David because of the gold. David has the option to double block here with the Reclamation Sage and Witness, stopping Lebrandon's nonsense, but he's more afraid of Baal's board so he lets her through. He hands his turn, discarding to end size. That was a lot. David starts his main phase by activating his Kinnon. He gets Findorn Elves as his best option, which wasn't the Gila Drake he was dreaming of. Since Kinnon was goaded, it attacks Luis. Luis blocks with the Seedborn Muse and Kinnon dies. On David's end step, Luis plays a Mystical Tutor, paying for my study. I draw one for my Remora. Firebrand Archer triggers and Luis draws three. With the Tutor on the stack, I pay 2 life to cast a Noxious Revival to put Luis's Niv Mizzet on top of his library, so it gets shuffled. I'm not too sure how important this card is, but he did Entomb for it. He shuffles it and then finds a Noxious Revival for himself. He puts it on top. Then he activates Thrasius to draw it. He uses 2 life to cast it, targeting Cyclonic Rift. I draw 2 and Luis draws 3. Luis ends some of my fun by casting Red Elemental Blast, targeting Mystic Remora and giving each of us some draw triggers. Remora is ultimately destroyed, however it was a very busy fish. On Bal's turn, he untaps Plateau. He tries to go to his attack step, but Luis responds with an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. I draw 1 and Luis draws 3. I don't lose too much so I'm okay with it, although Bal himself wasn't super happy. He hands his turn, discarding to end size. On my upkeep, I cast a Silence. I don't really have a way to win this turn, but I wanted to check for Luis's reaction and ultimately do what I have to unimpeded. Luis thinks for a bit, but allows the silence to resolve. After that, I cast an enlightened tutor to find a carpet of flowers. I draw it. I play the carpet and a reflecting pool, wanting to get some nice mana. I play an arcane signet and then go to my second main phase. I get 3 blue mana from the carpet and cast a Gilded Drake. It resolves, and I swap control with Seedborn Muse. I then cast Assassin's Trophy on the Firebrand Archer. Luis actually forgets to fetch for land here. With the extra blue mana floating, I cast Amulet of Vigor. A bit sad that I can't go all the way this turn yet, but pretty close. In response, Luis activates Thrasios and reveals a Time Twister. 
I go to my end step, discarding to my hand size. I am also hoping that I have enough interaction to stop Luis from winning on his turn. Luis plays his team vents untapped, losing 2 life. He plays his own carpet of flowers, which alludes to his lack of originality. He attacks me with a drake, not too happy about my gift. On his second main phase, he has 3 blue with the carpet of flowers and taps arcane signa to play a mana vault, then taps it to play scroll rack. He activates it, putting aside 8 cards and drawing another 8, which could mean he isn't where he wants to be yet. Luis plays a Mox Amber. He sacrifices Thrasius to culling the weak to add 4 black mana. He then casts Demonic Tutor. He plays a Chrome Mox, exiling Fiend Artisan. Then he plays a Wish Claw Talisman, meaning 2 tutors on the same turn. This is not ideal for the rest of us. He activates the Claw, then passes it to Val. Finally, Luis casts Isochron Scepter, imprinting Dramatic Reversal. He activates it, and I counter the first activation with a Muddle the Mixture. Luis responds to my Muddle the Mixture with a Veil of Summer. In response, I try to Cyclonic Rift the Isochron Scepter. He exiles Niv Mizet Paran to cast a Force of Will, countering my Rift. It looks like Niv Mizet was important after all. With that, my interaction ends. Luis now has infinite mana of all colors and we're pretty close to losing. He casts Thrasios and starts activating him, drawing his entire library in front of our eyes and making us wonder if he'll go the full Thassa's Oracle route. Luis, however, plays it smart. He casts Underworld Breach and follows it up with the Firebrand Archer from his graveyard, rather than going for a I Win card. In response, Bal casts an Angel's Grace, showing him he was ready for that venue. Alas, Luis kills me and David and waits for Bal's upkeep to finish him off as well. Thanks for following us through this match everyone, Firebrand Archer vindicated Luis this match. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons and especially Izanagi, Carneiro, Troy, Stefan, TJ Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo and Eagle Eagle, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing or becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH related matters, join us on Discord. Come join us again next week for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then.